Hello, welcome back again to Total Saw Solutions. My name is Ron Angelo. And I'm Don Angelo. And today in this video, we will be de demonstrating how you line up your table saw correctly. We are using a Sears Craftsman table saw, as many of you have these in your basements already. So Ron's going to go and we're going to first, he's going to discuss about getting your saw blade square 90 degree to the table. What tool do you have there? Right here is a, a solid square, steel square. It's very accurate. And what I'm planning on doing is when you want to get your blade, you have to make sure it's square. But first of all, you got to unplug the table saw. Yes. It's very important to be safe as we unplug it before we start moving everything around. Now, I'm, as I put the blade, the square against the blade, it, you want to put it between the two tips. And, and as I look through, you want to have either a light source or a piece of paper, something, so you can eyeball and look down there. And you crank your handles in until everything, um, so it's all dark. Once it's dark, you know you're, you're lined up correctly. And what he's doing here is if there's a little gap that way, when it's parked, that means we have to make an alignment. So to make the alignments properly, there is, on the lead screw that goes back and forth, there is a little thumb knob, a screw, that you can loosen and lock it position. You have to keep working with it until there is no light there where it's totally, um, it, it holds that, that, it cancels the light. Then what you want to do is lock down that. It's a stop. A stop. It's a stop that you, yeah. that you do. You might have to play with a little bit and check it. But when you have that done, you've got that part of it done. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is lining up your miter gauge and the, this slot through here with your table saw blade. And by doing that, I'm going to be taking a magic marker and I will be marking a tooth on the, on the carbide tip and mark your tooth because that's your reference point as you will be um, testing with your blade. I'm using a square piece of stock and I'm going to line it in. I will be taking the little um, piece of wood and rub it right against the tooth. And he's still holding the and piece I'm of wood with his hand. And now I'm going to move it all the way far down. And where I marked again with the tooth, I'm bringing it here. And if you have your blade, if, it's, if your saw is correctly and squared with your slot, it should hit that piece of wood at both, at both points. And if it doesn't, that means you have, there's four bolts, I mean six bolts, three here and three here. And you have to loosen up those bolts and you're going to have to change the whole saw unit head so that it lines up. And you, we're looking for a parallel, parallel to this edge here and the, and the rip blade. And so once you get it close, you snug one down a little bit and you keep manipulating until you get exactly what you're desiring of the tip slightly touching. You tighten down all the, the bolts and then you test it again. And you keep doing that till you acquire what you're looking for in touching the tip in the front and the back. Now the next step we're going to be is lining up your fence. And by doing that, I already pre-cut a board. It's squared up pretty parallel. And you're going to take this board and stick it right along your fence, just like so, and along right against your blade. And now this right here is from a lid from a sour cream container. You take a little shim out of it and I will be placing that right at the end of the board. This is roughly a 12, if you want to be a technical, 12, 14 inch board. And, and I loosen up the fence and I slide it right up to the wood. But what you got to do is loosen up these, these bolts on here, loosen them up so that the fence moves. It will be able to move back and forth. This, this will hold the true perpendicular. Wherever it locks down, that's where it's going to, it's going to copy that same pattern with the saw blade. So we're going to loosen it up so she can float back and forth. But he's using this as a gauge because it's already a parallel, it's a board that's the same on both sides. And now when I'm tightening everything down, I make sure I force this fence against the rail here, pushing against here, and holding this at the same time, holding it, tightening it all down. And the reason for the shim is we want to have a little bit of a gap. 
at the end of your fence here. So your fence is tipping out just a little bit for as you're cutting. For those of you that are want to be more accurate, this is about 20 thousandths. So you can go 15 to 20 thousand shim if you wanted to be more accurate. So. And so as you're cutting through, when you're making your cut through, and the blade finishes cutting in the front part, you should not be able to hear any of the noise of the blade. If it's starting to tink, tink, tink on the way back, when you're pushing through, you know that the fence toe is in too far. So you have to keep adjusting so you don't hear any tinking. But if you adjust it too far, then you're going to have too much away as you're cutting your board. And then your finish will be very a little bit. So we want to maintain. Now when we finally get to the point where you're satisfied, where it's cutting properly, you can run cuts. The best way with this saw blade is to just bring it down so it maybe sits up about a quarter inch above the workpiece, maybe about the depth of the gullets, just so it allows cool air to come back in as it cuts with the microcurve 40. So this ends our program with lining up your table saw and we, we um, hope you have a lot of fun cutting and be safe. Thank you.